Welcome everyone to Frederick County Public Libraries live virtual event on Home Buying 101 for down payment and closing costs. My name is Chris Buecher and today we are joined by Amy Wolf, who is the branch manager of the Amy Wolf team of direct mortgage loans. They are located over off of Technology Way behind Fred Francis Scott Key Mall. Amy has a master's degree in social work, but she has spent the last 16 years working in the mortgage cost, mortgage loans field. And I am happy to announce that their organization um, was one of the top 1% loan officers nationwide in the country last year. So we're very happy to have Amy join us today. Amy, take it away. All right. Well, thank you all. Can you all hear me okay? All right, I am uh, just, the purpose of today is for me to go over all of the different uh, options or many of the different options that are available in the state as well as in the county um, for down payment and closing cost assistance. So many times when people are purchasing a home, um, one of their concerns is I don't have enough money saved up for down payment or how am I gonna pay for the closing costs and things like that. And so when you look in the state and also in Frederick County, Frederick County is amazing with the different types of programs and support they have in many different arenas, um, but especially for the down payment and closing cost assistance. All right, so once again, there's many options to help you purchase a home. So whether you're a first time home buyer or a repeat home buyer, there's actually different programs that are out there. And today what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go through a couple of those different programs. So the one main program is Maryland Mortgage Program. We also are gonna to touch base real quick on the homeowner's tax credit, which a lot of people don't know about. The Frederick County Home Buyers Assistance Program. We're gonna talk briefly about the Prosperity Savings Account, the Sold on Frederick II, Housing Voucher Program, Credit Cafe, and then some quick just touch base on some other county programs. All right, so the first thing we're looking at is general down payment and closing cost assistance. Okay, so just like some quick basic information on most of the programs that are out there, most of them are going to require for you to take some sort of home buyer education class or certificate. Now we have a link that we can send you very easily where you can go online and you can take these classes. Some of the classes have a small cost and the link that we're able to provide to you um, is good for almost every program out there and it actually is free um, for you to do online. Um, most of the programs we're going to go over today have some sort of income limits. They're either income limits that are, you know, for each state count or county program. And each program has different income limits. So it's really important um, to know that you can't just kind of swap between all the programs. One of the jobs when you're of us as loan officers is when you apply to try to get pre-approved for a home is that we're going to look at your specific situation and see what um, programs are going to best fit you. Um, so for some of the programs, you cannot currently own, own another property or home. So in most cases, you don't have to be a first time home buyer, but in most cases, you're not going to be able to also own another house. So the majority of these programs are not for investors. They're not for I'm buying a vacation home or a second home. They're for people that are gonna be living in as their primary residence. All right. So there's two main types of assistance that are out there. And this is really important to understand because there's loans versus grants. And a lot of times people hear down payment assistance and they don't understand that there's two different types. So the loans typically have a repayment term and most of those are what we call a silent second mortgage. And once again, every program has different guidelines that so it's our job as your loan officer to really know all the guidelines, dig in deep and make sure you understand the program that you're qualifying for. Um, a silent second mortgage, what that means is that it's a second mortgage that sits there. So it's actually a lien that's against your property as a second mortgage. However, there's typically no payment, there's no interest. So just as an example, and for a silent second mortgage, if you were to get $15,000 from the state of Maryland, they give you that money, it would sit there at 0% interest, zero payment until you either sold your house um, or if you turned it into investment property. 
or if you want to refinance to try and get into a lower term, you have to pay that back at that time. So that's the loan portion. There's also grants, and this is what we call the free money. So there's no repayment terms. So if it's a grant, a true grant, it means that they're giving you that money and there's no terms attached to it where you'll have to pay it back. Um, and for those, a lot of times you can refinance um, pretty quickly after. So we're gonna start with um, digging into the Maryland Mortgage Program. And just like it says in the title, this is for all of Maryland. And each county does have specific guidelines and specific rules. Um, so, you know, we can dig into that, but um, just to give you an idea of the programs that they have out there. So, and all of this information is actually on the web. If you were just to Google, um, Maryland Mortgage Program, um, you're going to see that the, these interest rates are actually published. Now, the rates that I'm going to go over with you today are um, actually from yesterday. Um, the rates went up slightly this morning. Um, I didn't have time to update all the PowerPoints, but they're just a slightly higher um, here this morning. So these first programs, the first time advantage, you, for all of these that we're going to go over first, you have to be a first time home buyer. The interest rates on these are great. Um, the very first one, you can see where it says government and it says 2.25%. Um, the government program, this is if you're not getting any money. So if you see at the top of that, it says no MMP DPA. DPA sounds for down payment assistance. So they have a program that if you qualify and if you don't need their money for down payment or closing cost assistance, they're gonna give you just a really amazing interest rate. Okay, that's one benefit. The next program down that says the first time advantage 5,000, it's just what it says there in the name, it's $5,000. So if you were purchasing a home and you know, you're buying a house for 100,000, they are gonna give you $5,000 towards your down payment and closing cost assistance. Now the program right below there is called the first time advantage 3% loan. And both of those programs are actually loan programs. And you do see that in the small print there, it says come with $5,000 DPA or comes with DPA loan equal to 3% of the first mortgage. Um, so these are, this is money that one day you'll pay back. It's an avenue to get you into the house. No interest on that once again, or anything like that. You're just, you know, you're getting money from the state that one day after your house is all paid off, you would then pay back or if you sold it. The 3% program, if you look at the interest rates on both of those, what you're going to see is that the $5,000 program, as well as the 3%, come with the same exact interest rate. And so all we do is we look at them and we decide which one is going to give you more money. So if you're buying a house for $200,000, 3% of that would be $6,000. So I would obviously use the 3% loan program to get you that extra $1,000. If you're buying a house for $100,000, 3% would only be 3,000. So I'm going to use the Advantage 5,000 program for you to get you the most money possible. Um, the next set of programs we're going to take a quick look at is the MMP Flex programs. And when you go look at the website, these are actually two separate columns that are there and they're colored exactly like this. We have a yellow and then we have this red and pink column. The red and pink column says you can be a repeat or first time uh, home buyer. Um, so that's another myth that a lot of people don't know is that you can access these programs if you've owned another house before. You can't own another house currently. So what that means is you could sell your house and then use this program immediately after. So you can definitely, if you're selling your house and buying a new one, you can qualify for this column of programs. This, these interest rates are slightly higher. I don't know if you remember from the last slide, but the last slide under government, it said 2.25. This one says 2.375. So they have a small increase in the interest rate um, and they still have those same great programs. So the Flex Direct is the one where you just get the lower interest rate. The Flex 5,000, same thing. You just get $5,000. The Flex $3,000, oh, I'm sorry, 3% loan. That is for 3% of whatever your loan amount is that they would give you towards down payment and closing cost assistance. And now what you're going to see at the bottom, and you're not going to see these in the other column, is the word grant. And these are my favorite programs. This is your Flex 3% and Flex 4% grant programs. 
And what these are is this is what I call the free money. Um, yes, the interest rate is higher. Um, however, you know, you could be buying a house for 300,000 and let's just say your loan amount is 300,000. And if you were to use the flex 4% grant, you would get $12,000 from the state of Maryland to help cover your closing costs and down payment. Your interest rate, if you were doing an FHA loan, that's a government loan. So it'd be a 3.625 interest rate. Now today, most interest rates are in the twos. So you're taking a, instead of getting maybe a 2.875, you're taking a 3.625 interest rate, which is higher. However, during that time, you only have to make six payments at that higher interest rate before you could be eligible to do a refinance. And you never have to pay that money back. So, you know, there is definitely a risk level. Um, people are always ask me, are you sure I'll be able to refinance? And the answer is no, I don't have a crystal ball. I wish I did. I wish I knew what rates would be uh, six payments out, which would be seven months. I wish I knew that, but I don't know that. Um, so there is a risk level there that if interest rates happen to go up, we would not um, be able to refinance you. So we just want to make sure before someone enters into any of these programs that they understand the ins and outs, but they also are comfortable with their payment where it currently is, um, just to make sure that we don't get into a spot where, you know, someone's going to not be able to afford their payment. We're definitely here to help counsel with that. Um, the other two programs that the Maryland Mortgage Program has that are kind of in their big core programs is the Maryland Smart Buy. And the Smart Buy program is a very cool program where you can pay up to, they, the state of Maryland will pay off up to $35,000 of your student loans. So yes, you can buy a house and you can pay off your student loans at the same time. Um, this program is a loan program. However, it has rules where it is forgiven. The loan is forgiven one-fifth per year over a five-year period. So if you were to, um, you know, get a loan for $35,000 um, over that five years, each year that passes, they would forgive $7,000 of that loan. Um, so if you were to sell it, you know, in the fifth year or in the fourth year going into the fifth, you would have to pay them back $7,000, but the rest of it would be forgiven because it's one fifth per year forgiven. Um, the next program, which I really love is uh, the Home Ability Program. And this program can offer up to $45,000 in down payment and closing cost assistance for anyone who has a disability or who, uh, for who cares for someone with a disability. We do have a, uh, affidavit that has to be signed by the, um, your doctor saying that you have a disability of some sort. Um, this money is limited, um, but it's, uh, it's a really awesome program where it helps to maximize someone's ability to buy who, you know, may have limited income or, or be caring for someone else. All right. So that's just a quick overview of the Maryland Mortgage Program. And as we go through these programs today, like, you know, my goal is not for you to understand the ins and outs of every single program because that's our job. Um, however, what I want you to do is I want you to have a, a basic overview and know, you know, hey, some of these things are out there. I should call someone. I should ask them about it. You know, give my office a call. And we'll be able to go uh, be able to go right through there with you. So um, before we move on to the other programs, I want to see if there's any questions that anybody has regarding the Maryland Mortgage Program. If you want to type anything in the chat, um, go ahead and I'd be glad to answer any of those questions. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move on, but we can always back up if anybody thinks of any questions. All right. So the next thing that we have here is the homeowner's tax credit. And the homeowner's tax credit is something that's also through the state of Maryland. And I can tell you that most people do not know about this program. Um, this came from my social work days. Um, but it's very cool if you have, if your income, your household income is under $60,000 for the year, um, and actually it could be a little bit higher than that, you can qualify for the homeowner's tax credit. Okay, and what this does is as soon as you find a house, once you get pre-approved, you go under contract, as soon as you go under contract to purchase a home, you have to let the state of Maryland know that you already 
um, and that you would like to apply for this program. You have to send them your tax returns. You have to send them some information, fill out an um, application. You have to stay on top of them a little bit. But what this program does is it reduces your tax obligation for your property taxes. So maybe your <clears throat> property taxes were going to be $300 a month for a certain house that you're looking at. And maybe through this program, it could lower you down to about $150 a month. So that would either, um, that, that impact could either have you qualify for more or just get you a lower payment if you weren't comfortable with the payment where it was. Now, the chart here is showing the basic income. And so if you look, if you make $30,000 a year at the bottom of this chart, the max taxes for a household income of 30,000, the max taxes that could be charged for real estate um, property taxes is 1680 um, a year. Okay, so if you take that 1680 divided by 12, that means $140 per month. And I did put the link there so that anybody can go on, take a look at that. And also you can always call our office um, to see if you qualify for that program as well. Um, the next thing we're going to hop into is the Frederick County programs. Like I mentioned, Frederick County is amazing in the support that they give to, you know, everybody who lives in Frederick County, um, even people moving to Frederick County in some cases. And um, so their programs are pretty awesome. The first program is actually the Frederick County HAP program. And that stands for Homeowners um, assistance or homeowners assistance program um, and it's a down payment assistance program uh, where you can get anywhere from eight thousand to ten thousand in assistance um, the qualifications on this one just like any of the other ones is based off the of household income i should back up and just mention that in frederick county for the maryland mortgage um in in frederick county for the maryland mortgage program your income can actually be up to for a household income. I think it's one hundred and fifty six thousand. I'll have to double check that, um, but it's it's relatively high. As we go through these county programs, you're going to see that the income limit is is lower for the county programs. Um, I did have someone just ask about the tax credit, and can it be applied to the current mortgage or is it for the year that you apply? Um, that's a really great question. Um, so for the tax credit. You actually, if you apply before you buy the house, they will actually modify your tax bill before you buy it, which helps us to approve you for a little bit more. You do have to reapply every single year, okay? So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you have the tax credit, every time that you file your tax returns again, you're going to be going on, getting a new application and reapplying. So if your income goes up, then the tax credit would either disappear or be reduced the credit that you would be getting? It's a really good question. Um, all right, so back to the Frederick County Homeowners Assistance Program. Um, so this program, once again, based off of household income, you can layer this with Maryland Mortgage Program. So there's many times that will help people purchase a home who are using the tax credit and the Maryland Mortgage Program and Frederick County HAP. So um, to, in today's market, it's very hard to find a house because I don't know if anybody's been like just watching on Zillow or wherever. And what you see is houses jumping off the market. Um, you see, you know, a house goes on, all of a sudden 15 people are putting offers in and that house is gone because there's a shortage of houses right now. So right now it's very difficult to ask the seller to help pay for any of your closing costs. So a lot of these programs that we're going over today are actually used to strengthen your offer um, and also to make it so you can purchase a home with limited money out of pocket on your own. Um, so you can layer that, which is really important to know. Um, the funding is also based off the fiscal year and typically renews on July 1st. So the fiscal year, you have July 1st to June 30th. Um, it's, you know, unfortunately, the Frederick County HAP program actually ran out of money yesterday. Um, so, you know, they usually don't run out this early in the year um, from what I've seen in previous years. However, it will renew around July. So we have plenty of people that are working on getting pre-approved now. They are pre-approved and they might be sitting back and waiting for this program to renew. Um, so, um, just to know that that it does sometimes run out of money. The Maryland Mortgage Program, on the other hand, I'm sure that they could run out of money. Um, however, 
you know, they have never run out of money with it being a state program in the past. Um, some of their specialty programs, for example, the home mobility program, that program um, does have a, an annual budget to it. So sometimes that one will run out of money as well. But for the majority, the state programs um, are fully funded year round. Um, one of the things that you must, uh, the property must be somewhere in Frederick County in order to use the Frederick County HAP program. Kind of goes without being said, but um, I've had a couple people before ask, I'm moving to Washington County, can I still use this money? Well, the answer is no, you have to buy in Frederick. Um, and you must currently live or work in Frederick County in order to be eligible for these funds. This is just a quick chart showing you the uh, estimated income. So if you have a family of three, if your household income is under $56,700, you'd be eligible for $10,000. A family of three, and you make un just under $71,650, then you'd be eligible for $8,000. Once again, these are loans, right? So one day you'll pay them back, but once again, with zero interest and zero payments. So it's basically free money, but you know that when you go to sell your house, that in the future, um, you will be paying that money back to the county. A lot of people always ask me why, and well, these programs, you know, once you pay that money back, they can use that money to help someone else make home ownership a reality. All right, this is just the requirements. Um, once again, I did put the link up in the top corner, so you can go and look at all this. All this information is right online. Um, you must be a first-time home buyer, like we spoke about, currently live or work in Frederick. The income must be at either the 80% or 50%, like we saw on the chart. Um, there is a first-time homebuyer education class. Once again, we have a link that we can send to you for the free um, homeowners um, education class. Um, the cool thing about this program is you saw with the Maryland Mortgage Program that it, the state of Maryland sets your interest rates. Well, Frederick County HAP does not do that. Frederick County HAP says, Amy, what can you approve this person for? What interest rate would you normally give them? And they will let us use their assistance without you know, them being in control of the interest rate, which is very nice, especially right now, rates are so, um, so wonderful. They're, like I said, 2.875, 2.75, they're really, really great right now. Um, must be your primary residence. And they also have a rule where you have to put at least $500 of your own funds into the purchase of the home. So each of these programs, um, the county and city programs typically have some sort of rule about how much money they want you to have in the system out of your own pocket. Um, they do require a one-year home warranty and they require a home inspection. So, you know, that's unique of this program from a lot of other programs that are out there. Um, in my office, I always suggest to people in the very first year when you're getting to know your house, um, you're moving into a brand new property, I do suggest that people look into getting a home warranty. Um, you know, depending on the market, sometimes the seller will pay for a home warranty for you. Uh, but I think it's really just a good idea just to minimize um, possible repairs that might become, you know, in that very first year for heating, air conditioning, and those kind of things. Also the home inspection, typically home inspections are not required. I don't know many people that buy houses without having a home inspection because they're really, it's really great to understand what you're buying before you purchase it. However, Frederick County, they don't need a copy of the home inspection, they need a copy of the invoice showing that you got it. They wanna make sure that you are educated on the property that you're buying and you're not making a bad decision. Um, if the house was built before 1978, they're also gonna ask you for a lead paint inspection. Um, that's, that's pretty typical. Um, typically, we don't ask for those, but a lot of times there's, uh, there's a disclosure or disclaimer that, you know, lets you know the house was built before then, to, you know, if there is lead, lead, uh, lead inspection needed, um, those inspections are usually around $250. Um, you can't have any co-signers. Um, all op ac applicants must occupy the home. And so that's a, that's a good point also, I should have mentioned up for the Maryland Mortgage Program that that's typical for most of these grant programs that they don't want you to have, you know, mom, dad, brother, sister, someone who's not gonna be living with you co-signing for you. Um, if you can't already afford the house and then for them to give you money on top of it to help you with down payment, closing cost assistance, many times they feel like they're setting you up for failure. So they do want, the income only to be used for the people who are actually gonna be living in the house. All right, if you have any questions on, the, on that program, I'm just gonna keep on rolling through, but feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat. 
Um, so the next program is the Prosperity Savings Account. This account is actually partnered with United Way. And this, this uh, account, typically um, homeowners are gonna sign up for this before or right when they're first starting to start the pre-approval or pre-qualification process with us. Um, they're gonna assign a rep to you. They're gonna um, work with you for household budgeting, money man management tips, um, and all those kind of things. Um, how their program works, is you can deposit up to $2,200 into a bank account. So they have you open up a separate bank account and they have you put your money in there. And their program operates in that they will give you a four times match. So you have 2,200, they match it four times, they give you an extra 8,800, and all of a sudden that money has been turned into $11,000. So it's a pretty cool program. Once again, it's a loan, okay? So it's a loan program. The 2200 your own money, you don't have to pay that back to anybody, but the 8800 if you were ever to sell your home or if you were ever to refinance, that money would get paid back or turn into investment property. That money would get paid back to the county at that time. Same thing here, qualifications are based on income limits set by the program. Um, I'm not going to read through all of these, but basically you're giving them proof of income. They do their own um, in-house um, en enrollment for the prosperity savings account um, program. We work very closely with the reps there just to make sure that everything's going right. So a lot of moving parts when you bring in all of these different um, grant programs. So in my office, we actually have a grant specialist that we assign to each file um, to make sure that everything is, is getting done on time and, uh, and that everyone's really, really well educated on what, what the next steps are. All right. The next program, this is a program that's not eligible for everybody, right? This is the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, so um, we work really closely with, with uh, the Frederick County's uh, Housing Authority. Um, one of my passions from being a social worker is to make sure that we're helping people, putting people in the right programs and, and those kind of things. And so if you currently are a recipient of Section 8 for your rental, so if you have rental assistance through Frederick County, Frederick County is one of the only counties that I know of that allows borrowers to uh, transition their Section 8 rental voucher into home buying dollars, which is amazing. Um, so what it does is, uh, in my eyes, this is, it breaks the cycle. So, you know, you might have, and for my days in social work, you might have a mom who was on Section 8 and then the kids were on Section 8 and, and you know, it's really hard for people to pull out that hole. Um, this gives these people a, 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 the ability to purchase a home and Frederick County provides that assistance. I believe the assistance comes for up to 10 years. It's kind of the same thing where you would, uh, you know, turn your income in each year. Maybe you need a certain amount of assistance the first year, but as you continue to increase your, your earning potential, the assistance disappears eventually down to nothing. Um, so they do have a requirement that you have to have one percent of your purchase price into the deal. So if you're buying a house for two hundred and twenty thousand, you'd have to have twenty two hundred dollars of your own funds into it. They also have their own um, home inspection. Um, so not only are you going to get your home inspection and your appraisal and all of those other things done, possibly a lead inspection if you're using the HAP program. Um, in this program, Frederick County is going to set out their own inspector to also look at the house to make sure it meets their standards for their voucher program. So very good, very cool program. Um, once again, it's only for people who are currently on a Section 8 voucher. I do not have the power to take your voucher and turn it into a home buying voucher. You do have to reach out to your rep at the county. Um, they enroll you into some classes. Um, one of, it's a really cool program, though. Another program we have is Sold on Frederick 2, and Sold on Frederick is a city program. Um, so you can get up to $15,000 in down payment and closing cost assistance. The house must be in the city of Frederick. You have to be a first-time home buyer. They do have a credit score requirement of 645. I should have mentioned that uh, previously. So for the Maryland Mortgage Program, your minimum credit score is 640 for the Frederick County HAP program, they don't have a rule. They say, Amy, if you can approve them and you can get them a mortgage, we will go ahead and give you that assistance. The Frederick City program, you have to have at least a 645 score. Um, 
they have to be able to be approved for you know a 30-year um, mortgage and the buyer must have a thousand dollars of their own funds into the transaction um, you can see the income limits up here whoops looks like they're a little bit uh, outdated they're from 2019 but just to give you an idea you've got a four person household you'd have to make under 97 uh, ninety-seven thousand and fifty dollars as a household now that's another thing to just mention is these programs are based off a household income okay so that doesn't mean well me and my boyfriend are going to be living together or me and my fiance or me and my husband are living together but i'm the only one going on the loan so i want you only to use my income i only use your income for the qualification for my 30-year mortgage that i'm giving to you however the county's rules and all of these down payment assistance programs rules or the majority of them are the rule is, is we have to use all household income so anyone who's going to be living there even if they're not on the mortgage we're going to need their pay stubs we're going to need their tax returns we're going to need all of those things that we would typically need just for the borrower so just to kind of keep that in mind all right the next thing I just wanted to briefly mention, this is not about money, but a lot of times you have to have your credit in order, in order to get the money from these other programs. So the Interfaith uh, Housing Alliance in Frederick County, they offer a credit cafe. I actually, pre-COVID was uh, the, the speaker or the counselor or whatever at that uh, at the cafe. Um, it's a really cool um, program that they have. You get uh, a, a class, group or group workshop first and then you also get a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one counseling um, program with um, a, a qualified person to actually re review that credit report with you give you tips and those kind of things so the contact information here is for for Lacey so just keep that in mind if you are you know wondering your credit impaired um, or you just need some help there my office is also like you know I said we do teach the class and a lot of my loan partners are also um, the counselors at the credit cafe we love giving back um so it, you know you also can reach out to us if you just want a one-on-one -on -one consultation from my office as well all right um so we're just going to roll through these real quick this is montgomery county this just lets you know other counties also have money obviously this is a frederick county program but um you know Montgom Mont montgomery county does have a program right now they're out of money washington county has a program it's called a home ownership program. Um, they also have one for a rehab program where you get up to $7,500 in Hagerstown. Um, and they'll help you to fix up a house. Prince George's County has like 10,000. Howard County has some money as well. And as I swing through those real quickly, you know, it's just to let you guys know that there is money out there. Frederick County has more programs than any of the other counties from what I know, um, but there are additional programs out there. Um, now, USDA is not a down payment assistance program, but especially in our area, I would, you know, be doing a disservice to you if I didn't at least mention it. So USDA financing is rural housing. And so, it is for not down in Frederick City, right? But like I live in Monrovia. Um, so Monrovia is eligible. Urbana used to be until Urbana got built up so much. Urbana is no longer eligible. Um, but anytime you're out in the, in the sticks a little bit in the county, um, you may be eligible for a USDA loan. So USDA is so um, awesome in that it offers 100% financing. The interest rates right now are in the twos. Um, same thing, 2.75, 2.875. And these rates, even that low, have been coming with a credit um, if your credit is decent. So what that means is I might be able to give you a 2.875 interest rate. Did this for someone um, uh, this morning. And that came with a two-point rebate. So that means if their loan amount was 300000 I can give them $6,000 back. Um, through a premium or credit that is there with the interest rate. So it's a very cool program that's out there. The 100% financing is a way for you not to need down payment assistance. We still may use these programs. We can use USDA with the above programs that we just mentioned. Um, we may layer those to help cover your closing costs. Um, so sometimes that will help stretch your money a little bit further. 
Also, USDA has a really cool little thing where if the property appraises high, we can finance in your closing calls. So if you happen to be buying a house and you're buying it for 150 and the appraisal comes in at 160, we can actually roll in $10,000 of your closing costs. So not only did you get 100% financing, but now you don't have to come out of pocket for your closing calls. Now, it's a little bit of a unicorn that I'm talking to you about. Um, so right now it's really hard to find a house under contract and have the appraisal come in high. Um, there's bidding wars going on houses. So, you know, know that that's a unicorn that I'm talking about. However, sometimes, you know, that could, that could come along. Um, so just to recap real quick, um, there are many down payment assistance programs available with a wide variety of qualifications. Uh, it's important that you work with someone that you know and trust and that's going to put your needs first. Um, of course, I'm a little bit biased because it's my office, but, you know, in my office, that's what we try to do is really be there to help people um, to make sure we're putting their right foot forward. We're looking into all these grant programs. Um, the grant programs, using them is a lot of extra work. Um, so, you know, you may talk to a bank who says, oh, no, we don't do those. Um, you know, some, you can decide whether they want to offer these programs. Um, we try to offer everything to make sure we're putting our best foot forward and that we're educating people to all their different um, options that are out there. Um, definitely our office is very experienced in helping the clients. For the Maryland Mortgage Program, we are their premier lender. Um, that means that if you were to go online and say you're in Frederick, they have two premier lenders, um, you have a 50-50 chance of them just sending your name directly to my team. Um, so that we can reach out to and help you. Um, you can, you know, when you contact our team, you know, we always are going to ask you about your home buying situation, where do you want to live, and then we're going to dig in deep with you, right, and we're going to figure out which programs are you eligible for and not eligible for. If you're starting the home buying process, you know, one tip I would give you is spill it all. Let us know everything that is going on, um, because that's our job um, and our underwriter's jobs in the end is to, um, to learn everything about you and they are kind of the end and they're a little sneaky and they'll figure out things. So if you just let us know everything up front, we can help to make sure you're in the right program so that you don't have any surprises in the end. Um, so if you would like to get started today, we have an amazing phone app. Um, on our phone app, we do have um, little drop downs underneath. They have information about the Maryland Mortgage Program, the USDA program. They have a spot where you can apply right online as well. Um, so you can either use the QR code there, or you can put in that bit.ly slash Amy Wolf underscore DML for direct mortgage loans app. Um, it does have links to, you know, all different kinds of programs. It has our contact information. Um, you know, feel free to just give us a call just to ask us questions and about the different programs. One of the first things to do is to, whether it's with our company or someone else, is to have your application completed. So you want to do the application, get a credit check, send in your basic information, which is tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. You know, don't worry about if you don't have a lot of money saved up. Don't worry if your credit's not there yet. Right. What you want is someone who's going to take a look, look at it, tell you where everything, you know, all the things that are available to you and to point you in the right direction to where you're going to be able to get that, that help to make you a homeowner. Um, so this is our contact information. Uh, once again, my name is Amy Wolf and our office line is 443-541-5545. Um, our text line is 443-541-4424. Um, and then we'll just kind of hang out and do some questions and, and answers here at the end. So feel free to uh, get any questions going. Looks like we have a question about, do we know if any of these prob uh, programs would work for a home in Pennsylvania and working in Frederick? Would you know the counterpart for Adams County that I could contact for PA assistance programs? So the answer is yes. Uh, Pennsylvania does have their pro own programs as well. Um, so if um, whoever was asking that question, if you'd like to just jot down our number, go ahead and reach out to our office. Um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's like P, P A F H A or H F A. Um, and they have several different programs that are available in Pennsylvania as well. Their programs are close to what we're looking at for the Maryland mortgage program, not identical. I think the income is a little bit, uh, is a little bit lower. 
Um, I'm um, licensed to um, help with loans basically everywhere on this side, of, this side of the map. So we've got Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, um, DC, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Florida, Georgia. I think that's about all of them. Um, so, and then we also at direct mortgage loans, we are licensed or someone is licensed in almost all of the, all of the states. Um, so, but you know, right here in Frederick, that's really where, um, you know, where, like I said, a lot of amazing uh, programs are. Um, and um, yeah, I'd be glad to point anybody in the right direction, even if you're looking at another state. Um, all right. Well, I'll hang out here for a little bit at the end, just for a couple minutes, see if any other questions come in. Just wanted to say thank you all for your time today. Um, congratulations on uh, taking the first steps to possibly uh, buying a house and learning and educating yourself. I always say knowledge is power. So, you know, as you go through this process and as you learn about these programs, as you apply and we look at your credit and we really teach you, that is when you'll be able to make the right decisions for you and your family. So, and thank you, Chris, for inviting me here. It's been great. Thank, thank you, Amy. It was very informative. I've already gone through the home buying process, so I wish I had <laughs> thought about talking to you beforehand, but it's been very informative, and hopefully people out there will be able to gain some knowledge from it. I do have one question for you, though. Um, when you were talking about interest rates, and you had yes. said at the beginning that the information you shared was even, was a little bit higher than what, no, what it is today was higher than what you shared because you got that information yesterday. Is that correct? Yep. So the interest rates went up by an eight. So um, if you were looking, we were just looking at locking in someone this morning and they had a 3.5. Yesterday, the markets were closed because of a holiday. So that was actually Friday's interest rate. But when the interest rates rolled out today, instead of a 3.5 for that grant program for the 4% 4, 4 grant, it went up to a 4.625. So very small change. It's not like you're going from a 3% to a 6%. Uh, I can tell you if you were looking a year and a half ago, just to give you an idea of where interest rates are right now, um, and don't quote me exactly on the year, year and a half, but year and a half, two years ago, those rates were at like a six and a half when I first started selling this grant program. And everyone was still using it because it was the free money. So interest rates are at all time lows, but uh, like Chris mentioned, I've been doing this for about 16 years now, and I've never seen rates this low. I mean, we are so busy um, because everyone's trying to buy right now because of where the rates are. Why do you think the rates have gone so low? Um, the rates have a lot to do with things like the economy, the stock market, and things like that. So when, and when there's uncertainty in the air, and obviously COVID has brought us the most uncertainty ever, um, that's when things happen. So usually, um, and this you know, isn't scientific, but usually if you're winning, if you're, if you're earning money in your 401k, if all of a sudden your 401k starts skyrocketing up, the interest rates are going to go up with it. <laughs> if you're starting to lose all of your money in your 401k, the interest rates are going to drop. Now, a lot of times the government, there's a lot of money at keeping these interest rates low. Um, a lot of people always have questions as well about, um, you know, what about refinancing? People, sometimes they think you can't refinance. It costs money to refinance. So if you've already purchased a home and you're just wondering what's out there for someone else, you know, reach out, find out if it's a good time to refinance for you. All you have to do is take a picture of your mortgage statement, send it over to us. We can take a quick look at it. And then we would go through the application process that looks like it makes sense. But if you have great credit or decent credit right now, most programs are in the twos. Um, they're starting to climb up a little bit. And, you know, and I think we'll see a little bit waffling back and forth. Um, projections are saying that, you know, a normal interest rate is probably four and a half to five percent, right? So, like, if you look at, like, what's the average, right? And so rates right now are, they're amazing. So it's like, even if they were to go up slightly, they're still great. Um, my aunt always tells me about when she first bought her house, I think it was a 13.5% interest rate. I can't even imagine, but rates have kind of taken the whole gamut of being up in the 16, 17%. And I think we've hit our all time low now, right now. So there is a new question for you in the chat. What is the average length of time to go through most of these programs? 
So the average turn time on programs um, for us is 30 to 45 days. And so a typical loan program or mortgage without any grant programs is 30 days from start to finish. We can still get a grant program done in that same 30 days, but it's all based off of you. Okay, so if we ask you for something, we ask you for tax returns, we ask you for pay stubs, whatever it is, if you're very responsive and you give everything back to us, remember, we're not only doing a loan internally, but we're also doing a loan with the Maryland Mortgage Program or Frederick County. So they're asking us for different things as well. If we can get things and turn them in quickly, we can still stay in that 30 day turn time. I know that my processors would say, don't tell people that, tell them 45 <laughs> days. Um, but so that's probably about where you are is anywhere from the 25 to 45 day mark, depending on how proactive we've been. Um, if you call us and say, I just found a house, I'm going to tell you 45 days because we don't even have your stuff pre-approved yet. If we have you fully pre-approved and you've been keeping your bank statements and pay stubs updated with us, um, you'll be in a spot where, you know, it's going to move a little bit quicker for you because we already have everything. There won't be any surprises coming around the corner. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. And we have some people, another thing is you're looking about getting pre-approved, you're thinking about buying, people say, when should I apply? And my answer is always now. And I don't care if you're buying six years from now or you're buying three months from now. My answer is always now because knowledge is power. And if you think you want to buy in four years or three years or, or two years or whatever it is, if you don't know where you stand currently, you can't make the right moves to make sure you're in the right spot when you are ready. So, I mean, if you're thinking about buying at any point, I mean, it doesn't, it takes 30 minutes or even just online on the phone app, you just kind of click around and, and you have everything that you need. Um, and we do a quick credit check. We reach out to you. We ask you for your documents. We look at those and then you know where you stand and, you know, knowledge is power. Pre-approval before it expires. Good question. So in, in my eyes, pre-approvals never expire as long as your stuff doesn't change. The real answer is once you're, as your documents expire, so does your pre-approval. So for example, if we pulled credit and if, you know, 120 days have passed or 90 days have passed, your credit report has expired. In my eyes, I don't have to keep repulling credit every single time if you haven't done anything. So if you're being completely honest with me and you say, well, yeah, my credit cards are still low. I haven't missed any payments. I haven't, you know, I've made all my payments on time. I haven't opened up anything new. I haven't switched my job or lost my job. I didn't uh, hit the lottery. <laughs> um, so if something changes, you have to let us know. And so your pre-approval, truthfully, is only as good as your information you gave us is still accurate. So you could get pre-approved and your pre-approval your pre could be gone the next day because you lost your job or bought, bought a car. I mean, I've had people buy a BMW the day before closing, which, you know, ruined their, ruined their entire approval and the ability to purchase a home. So um, how we work is if you get pre-approved with us, we reach out to you on a weekly basis if you're actually out shopping, just to check in, see how things are going. If you're kind of on hold, we reach out to like once a month. If you're really on hold, we reach out to you like every other month, just to check in, see how things are going. Um, so, but really the actual pre-approval, I would say is usually about 60 to 90 days. If you were to call in and ask for an actual letter, usually somebody says, Amy, we're gonna be shopping this weekend. I say, cool, send me over your most recent bank statement and pay stub. I get your, your I update your pre-approval and it kind of stays active at that point. So hopefully that answers that question. You might have anything else before we sign off here? I do not see anything. All right. Well, thank you so much, Amy. This has Absolutely. really been informative and hopefully, like I said, some people will reach out to you for some clarification yeah. on those programs and We'll have a whole bunch of new homeowners soon. You know where to find us. We're always there. So um, we're actually, we even have people in the office on the weekends there to answer the calls. And um, so, you know, we, we're definitely there for you. So um, thank you all again for, for joining and um, hope to hear from you soon. All right. Thank you, Amy. All right. Bye.